Hello everyone and welcome to another STAT 437 lecture video. So in today's video, uh, we're going to be reviewing linear regression models. So I'm assuming that all of this is review for you all, uh, that you've seen linear regression at least once before, but probably several times throughout the statistics courses you have taken. And so I'm gonna run through a fairly quick review of what you need to know from linear regression to uh, succeed in this course. A lot of what we're going to be doing builds off of regression, so it's important to feel like you have a strong basis, but if you understand everything that I talk about today, that's great. Now I'm going to be running through it fairly quickly because I'm assuming that most of you have seen it before, and so because of that, if anything does not make sense, if you don't feel like you fully remember all of the topics that uh, we're going to talk about here, then definitely let me know, and I'm happy to clarify any points further. So with that, we can start asking, what is linear regression? So generally speaking, when we're talking about linear regression, we're talking about ordinary least squares estimators. The basic idea is that we have some quantity, we'll call it y, and we want to model the conditional expectation of y given x. And x is going to be a set of factors that we care about. So essentially, we want to know what is the mean relationship between some outcome variable, which we call y, and a set of variables that uh, are our explanatory factors, the, the xi's. So a linear regression model says that the conditional mean of yi given xi is given by this linear combination xi times by beta. And then if we take this model, we can use the ordinary least squares estimation procedure, which takes beta hat to be x transpose x inverse, x transpose y, and this gives us the OLS estimating uh, estimators. And so this is generally speaking what we're doing here. So the uh, basic premise is that we have some continuous outcome and we want to relate that continuous outcome to some set of factors. And so we do that through a linear function. Now, I'll wander over to the whiteboard over here and just uh, clarify something on notation, right? So we're saying that the expected value of yi given xi is equal to xi times beta, right? Now, oftentimes we're actually gonna write this out a little bit more explicitly. So here, xi is going to be a vector as is beta. Right? And if we've selected their dimensions correctly, then uh, for instance, we might take xi to be a row vector. So it's gonna be say one by p, then beta is p by one, and that gives us out our one by one outcome. But you might actually see this written as the expected value of yi given xi is going to be something like beta zero, beta one, x one i plus you know, beta two, x two i, up to beta p, x uh, p i, say, right? And this, if we then take uh, x i equal uh, to a one in the first uh, column, and then x one i, x two i, up to x p i, and we take beta equals beta zero, beta one, beta p, then if we have uh, xi beta, then that gives us the same linear relationship, right? So when we're talking about this linear form of the mean, that's really what we are talking about there. The OLS estimators can be viewed in two different ways. So either we can assume that the distribution of our outcomes is normal or normal conditional on the uh, covariates that we care about. And if we assume that, and we assume that the mean is correctly specified, then we can view the OLS estimators as though they are maximum likelihood estimators for the uh, quantity beta here. If we don't want to assume normality, we can still use the OLS estimation procedure. And here what we're going to do is we're going to say that the OLS estimators are the estimators that minimize the mean squared error. So what do we mean by this? Well, 
if we have an estimator theta hat and theta hat's an estimator for theta, then we say that the mean squared error, and we write MSE, mean squared error, of theta hat is given by the expectation of theta hat minus theta squared, if theta hat's a scalar. And if it's not, then you'll have to use a quadratic form for the vectors, right? And so then if we're talking about beta hat as an estimator for beta, well, then we could write the MSE of beta hat is equal to the expected value of beta hat minus beta squared. And the OLS estimators are going to minimize this quantity. And minimizing this quantity is a good thing because uh, this is a measure of how close to the truth an estimator is, right? So the smaller the MSE, the better the estimate that we're producing is. And uh, so what you can actually prove is that regardless of the distribution of the error term, if you've correctly specified the linear combination for the mean, then the OLS estimators are the best estimates possible in terms of uh, mean squared error. So there's either this assume normality and use maximum likelihood theory, or we can use least squares estimation to um, get to the same, the same conclusion. Now, in order to perform OLS, there's uh, several assumptions that we need to make, three key assumptions. So the first is that we're assuming that the conditional mean is linear in the parameters, right? And so in the parameters is an important piece there. And what we mean by that is that you could have x squared in, in the model. You could have the log of x. You can sort of transform the variables any way that you want, but you need to make sure that beta is included only in terms of uh, linear terms, right? So if the conditional mean is linear, then we also have to assume that there is constant variance, right? So when we are assuming it in terms of the MLE uh, specification, we assume that everything is uh, distributed normally with variance sigma squared. If we're gonna take the least squares estimation procedure, we still want to assume constant variance and we'll still call it sigma squared, it's just not normal anymore, okay? But so we're assuming constant variance across all of the observations. And we also assume that the yi's are independent. So there's a general way that we would uh, write this if say, we're going to be uh, using the normality version of it. So we might say that um, yi given xi are going to be distributed, independent and identically distributed, or they're iid, they're normal. We know that the mean is given by xi beta and the variance is given by sigma squared, right? So the idea is that this mean is linear in the parameters. So that's the first assumption. The uh, constant variance is given by the sigma squared here. So that's assumption number two. And every i, uh, so for i equals one to n, each individual in this sample is independent. Right, so that's assumption number three. And those three assumptions are key. We don't need this normality assumption necessarily, um, but we do require those three assumptions in order to apply ordinary least squares theory the way that we typically apply ordinary least squares theory. Okay, so then we can talk about the asymptotic analysis, right? So if we're willing to make all of these different assumptions, then what do we get? And the basic idea is that asymptotically, these are normal. So what we uh, are really saying is that if n is large, so as n goes to infinity, then our estimators are going to behave as though they are normal. And because of that, we can do things like generating confidence intervals by taking beta hat plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error of beta hat, for instance, right? And this value right here, this 1.96, is our z-score value corresponding to uh, 0.975, right? So that's a standard sort of walled type confidence interval. If we want to test the null hypothesis that uh, beta beta zero, say, is equal to beta star, then we could take uh, beta zero minus beta star divided by the standard error of... Uh, sorry, beta hat zero. And under the null hypothesis, this is going to be approximately distributed as a standard normal random variable. 
right? So all of these types of hypothesis tests, these t-tests, uh, you know, the, the types of things that you're used to seeing and testing uh, when you're looking at uh, regression analysis, all of that comes from this asymptotic analysis. And this asymptotic analysis is valid regardless of whether you're using a least squares justification or you're using the maximum likelihood estimate. So you don't actually require uh, normality to get these results, but these results only are guaranteed to hold when n goes off to infinity. In small samples, it becomes a little bit trickier, but if we're talking about the asymptotic case, uh, that's sort of where we're at. So in conclusion, with linear regression, we're looking at ways of modeling a continuous outcome with respect to covariates that might be of interest to us. We do this by specifying a linear form for the conditional mean, assuming constant variance, and assuming that all of the data are independent. And from these assumptions, whether we want to assume normality or not, we can derive a set of least squares estimators that are going to provide us valid asymptotic analysis uh, based on sort of this walled type analysis where we can build out the confidence intervals or the t-tests that you're used to seeing. So that's really all you need to recall from linear regression. If you're comfortable with everything that I've discussed here, that's great. We can start learning to analyze longitudinal data from there. If any of this is in, not familiar to you, I'd suggest you review notes from a linear regression course, or you can reach out to me and I'm happy to provide a little bit more context, but hopefully that was clear and I will see you in the next lecture video.